that's really based not on second grade at all. They use that, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming just by their test scores and their reading levels that they'll mm -hmm. see themselves, and based on the SABAS curriculum, mm -hmm. if they're ready, I'm not sure at the end of first grade what exactly they use, if it's the same okay. as ours, to know that they're prepared for right. second grade. Right. We use the word that some folks may not know, SABAS curriculum. What in the world is that? The college preparatory <laughs> okay. curriculum. Yeah, let, let's okay. talk about SABAS, first of all. Let me do that. I don't know that we've yeah. done that too much about that. Folks, most charter schools, if not all, are run by a management company. And with the International Academy of Flint, it's the SABAS, S A. S-A-B-I-S, SABAS. If you have a computer and want to go on, online for that, just punch in www.sabas.net and you'll be able to find the entire SABAS system worldwide. We've got over 70 schools throughout the world. The curriculum that we use to educate Flint kids and kids in Missouri or kids in Minnesota or kids in the Middle East, pretty much the same all over the, all over the world. So the SABAS curriculum is noted for college preparation. And that's why, and again, I mentioned this several times on the program, 100% of our high school kids must be qualified for college. We won't graduate them unless they do, unless they are. They have to show us a letter of acceptance from a college to graduate from high school because they've been there some three, some five, some ten, some, ten, some ten, twelve years have been with us, and by now they're really ready for college. So that's what we're about, making sure kids are going to succeed in college. So, Nicole referred to the Sabas curriculum. It's our own curriculum. We use other textbooks from other uh, textbook companies to supplement what we do, but it's our own basic curriculum, and that's why we have, have a very accelerated curriculum, usually generally beyond uh, what some other schools have. So thanks for bringing that point up. I'm not so sure I ever covered that, that before. I would, too, encourage, if there are people who are questioning coming to the school or questioning the curriculum, at any time, come in and look at some of the curriculum or look through the textbooks mm -hmm. and see the stuff that we're doing because even stuff that the kids have in their desks or to see what they've come up with because you're going to get the best out of that or what the kids have done. Um, and another point on where you were talking about us being a K-12 through school, which is really nice, and I know um, a lot of the kids there, especially teachers that have been there since it's been open. Now, Ms. Cox and myself have been there for five years um, but what's really nice about it is you can collaborate with the teachers and your student will get to see, like you said, you have the parents and teachers involved, but it's not just them. You have the teachers from years prior that are also giving their input. Mm -hmm. If there's something that's not working in the classroom, you can always go back. Where I've had teachers in middle school come back and say, what did you do with this? Or did you see this situation happen? Where you can collaborate with um, other staff members to help that student even more. And then that student also has that support group year after year. They have all of their teachers still there with them to help them as they go on to middle school and even high school. Maybe my first years there I didn't see it as much, but now as the years, five years have gone on, you see so many of your own students and you get to see their accomplishments and get to be a part of things that they're doing. Yeah, and at 3.30 and beyond, when our teachers stay for, you know, help other kids or just work for preparation for the next day, it's not unusual to see older kids in older grades moving into the smaller grades because they remember you want to mm -hmm. say hi to and I think that relationship is very nice and I, I know what you've heard it before and some schools use that same term but we really are at our school a family and uh, we support each other up and down the line and it's real good because to our high school graduation who comes to our high school graduation our elementary teachers do because those are the folks that had input into those kids when they were a little bit small. And that's what makes IAF so unique at the Genesee yeah. County level compared to other charter schools that are around in this area because we are a K through 12 school. Yeah, and it, it's all under one roof. And of course, some parents uh, may be concerned, oh, I don't want to send my little kid to a school where there's high school kids. Well, in our mind, in our school, we're very segregated. And of course, that refers to we have uh, certain floors that certain kids are on. And it's just no one in the building. You don't go there unless you're that age group. We have separate lunch hours. We have four different lunch times. Terrell, what time do you eat lunch? 11.30. 11.30. You're in the first group then. Okay. What's your favorite lunch, by the way? Food. <laughs> the way you're growing, and I can appreciate it. Dad, I don't know what the food bill is at home, but I'm glad you're taking care of it, buddy. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Now, is there an older or younger child? I, I don't know. Does he have older brother, siblings, brother, sister? Yes. Okay, what? 
You don't have older sisters? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I do. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, well, Dad, um, let me jump back to you if I could for a minute. Um, what is it that you um, kind of like about us? Uh, and has he been to another school before he came to our school? No. He um, didn't. Well, we were fortunate enough. His aunt is also a teacher at the school. So she mm -hmm. kind of introduced us to it and let us know how good it was. And that was his first school. And it's going to be his only school. <laughs> All right. Glad to hear that, partner. Okay. Uh, that's great. Um, now, has he got friends in the neighborhood where he's from, and do they, uh, do the other kids uh, have much relationship with him? You talk about what they're doing in school as compared to what he's doing? Well, I don't know if they talk about school. <laughs> Most kids wouldn't, probably. Okay, all right, okay. Well, good. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Um, let's, uh, maybe we could talk for a minute about, um, well, at the end of second grade, if you're able to talk about that, what are we expecting that child to be able to do moving into third grade? What would be our expectations so that they can advance? And of course, at our school, you do talk about testing, because that, folks, is really the only way that a child is advanced. And something we'll never do, never, 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 ever, and that is just because your child spent a year at our school, they're going to be advanced to the next grade. We don't do that. You're advanced to the next grade if you earn it, and you earn it through the testing program as well. So maybe you could talk a little bit about advancement into grade three. With some of our exams that we take in the second grade right now, currently students are given the test and they read certain parts on their own. By the end Ooh. of the second grade, they're expected to read all their exams because third grade requirement is okay. they read everything on their test by okay. themselves. So one of the major transitions from second to third grade is the independency when it comes down to their exams as well as the expectations from different teachers because in K through two is self-contained classrooms. In third grade, they move on to having two different teachers teaching different subjects oh. and the homework increases and the level of difficulty okay. increases. With so the you don't level. team at grade two, but we do at grade three, mm -hmm. okay. And typically the teaming is in what subjects? English math. Math, okay, all right. And then, and let's, maybe we could talk to the audience just a little bit about why we team because of, of the preparation issue. You, you can concentrate on your specialty and really do a super good job instead of teaching five or six subjects during the day. Can you address that a little bit? Um, or did I just do that? You just did that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It what? just makes it easier for the third grade team. Sure. There's two different English teachers, two different math teachers, yeah. and they sit down and kind of do the curriculum and lesson planning together. Okay. And, and then when it's time for that teacher to go to, to teach the lesson for the other, other child, they walk across the hall or wherever. And then and there's an advantage to that also. That way your child gets to see instruction from someone else. Because what's going to happen as they get older, they're going to have instruction from several different people. And uh, therefore, this is kind of introducing them in a very casual, very informal, very very good way to hearing about uh, education from a couple of different people. Okay. And plus, they get that instruction from someone who's highly qualified in that subject area, yeah. too, someone who that's so their you, area you elect then pretty much if you want to do math or, or the uh, English or the reading part of team teaching. And that's you, if you're elected, that means you have more interest in it probably, and that might be your, a better skill level, and a better skill level transforms into uh, being able to be a better and a more effective teacher. Most yes, and on that note too, just because we are self-contained since this is a second grade um, time that we're taking right now, just because we don't have 